Yeah, no, well, welcome everybody to our panel and presentation on Open G2P. So we've got joining us today, uh, Kisom and Sultan. At the moment, they're in Mumbai, Delhi, right? I always mix the two up, so. And then Steve Conrad's calling us in from Minnesota. So Open G2P, you know, is something that's emerged led by, you know, Sultan and some of the others there in Sierra Leone, you know, out of the Ebola crisis and the response they put together to help digitize payments to the healthcare workers there. And Kizom and Sultan, you know, have been building out the concept and coalition behind Open G2P as a reference architecture and a movement to help to digitize, you know, large scale tra cash transfers at the government level, which is a very prescient topic, you know, given COVID-19 and all of the responses that need to be made to help re-stimulate economies and whatnot. And so the MIFOS initiative, you know, James and myself have been helping to advance this effort, you know, helping to align it with the, the MIFOS and FINREC architecture, helping to align it with what's going on with Mojaloop and Payment Hub. And then Steve is a member of Dial. He's helping to advance industry-wide option of digital public goods. So Dial is supporting the digital public goods alliance that's forming that he'll speak to. And Open G2P aligns perfectly, you know, as this digital public good, which helps to tie together a number of these foundational building blocks like accounts, like payments, like digital ID. So this session, you know, is aiming to educate uh, the community on what's being brought forward here and allow you to, you know, identify opportunities that you can become involved as I think it's a space that, you know, is very needed and others in the FINRAC community aren't active about this ongoing effort in this regard. So yep. I'll let you all take it away. And then James, you know, feel free to add in wherever you are, like on what you'd like to contribute <laughs> to the discussion too. So. Yeah, um, so sorry, I thought we were gonna just do a formal introduction of the, of the folks on the call. Um, definitely, we wanna introduce this concept and we want to talk about how it is related to the Apache FINRAC project um, we're also going to cover some of the tool sets that have been developed and some of the tool sets that have yet to be developed. This is going to really pick up on um, some themes that we've talked about earlier, which is orienting the project towards use cases and making it useful to the world, and two, connecting it to other projects. So Apache Finerac by itself uh, does certain things, but when you connect it to other things like Mojaloop for payments, like an identity system, like a, a government payment system, uh, government uh, transfer um, effort, you you get to larger um, larger use cases and larger benefits. So I think with that, um, maybe what I could do is I could call on um, on uh, Kazem to sort of give us a summary of how this um, uh, started. Uh, and Sultan, or actually, let's go with Sultan first. Sultan, how did this start? Um, and what's that story about? So I, I, I would I, I would suggest we go with the with 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 with, 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 with Kesa on on that because she okay. does a, a little better job of of, of articulating okay. that, that story. Well, well, the fun fact is, uh, James, that Sultan and I met. Uh, during our experience in Ebola, and many years later, uh, we are married with uh, with children. So this is a fun fact for the audience. Uh, you know, as we talk about use cases, uh, uh, but but I'd like to, James, uh, just say that um, you know it'd be great to start with this overall um, intention of you know what is a digital public good and the alliances that are formed. Okay to really make it useful. We have a slide deck for the audience uh, that Steve is gonna st kick us off with, if that's okay. Great, great, yeah. Yeah. great. Kick us off. The <laughs> let's see if we've got. Thanks, Steve. Here. Can you see the uh, slide deck window? I'll present here. Is that uh It's showing, yeah, You're, you've got oh, it. Right. All right. Yeah. So uh, I can do just a little bit of framing uh, and then dive into kind of the specifics of, of Open G2P and how it connects to kind of um, this uh, digital public goods and building blocks concept. So, yeah, my name is Steve Conrad. I am 
from Digital Impact Alliance. I lead our engineering team at Dial, and uh, I'm also a contributor to the Finneract platform, um, particularly did some work on very early integrations with the Mojo Loop uh, platform. Uh, today, we want to talk about OpenG2P, this tool for building, um, er, for mobilizing large-scale cash transfers. But I think it's important to have a little bit of background on a couple of concepts, building blocks and digital public goods, and then we can lead into OpenG2P. So digital public goods, I mean, I think we are all familiar with open source software and products. Um, digital public goods have a little bit of a, a narrower scope. Um, they're software standards and data sets that have been developed and funded by international donors to support the sustainable development goals. That's the working definition that we use at Dial and that other um, organizations that we work with uh, use as well. So these are tools that are specifically oriented around humanitarian efforts and, and the sustainable development goals. Just a little bit of background on Dial. Um, Dial was started back in 2016 and I think one of the first things we realized is that um, the digital public goods or DPGs as we refer to them, uh, the ecosystem is really fragmented. We see a lot of very sector specific um, products and implementations. We see places where there's a problem and somebody writes a very specific solution to address that problem. We don't see a lot of solutions that are uh, cross sectoral or cross uh, or work across contexts. And so Dial created the Open Source Center to support digital public goods, uh, including Finneract and many other tools. And the idea is to address challenges around sustainability and community, but also around interoperability and creating more generic cross-sectoral solutions. So uh, the DPGs that, that Dial has partnered with include a lot of health tools like Bomni, uh, OpenLMIS, Rapid Pro is a messaging system, uh, Mifos and the Finneract um, platform. So we've worked with a variety of different tools uh, that exist already in the, in the uh, digital public goods ecosystem. At the same time, Digi uh, Dial developed what we call our uh, SDG framework. And this framework really frames the idea of creating solutions for the humanitarian sector in terms of building blocks. Building blocks are generic software components that can be reused and can be stacked together, plugged together into cohesive solutions. We uh, broke out some use cases and we saw that you know, a, a use case might require an identification building block, a messaging building block, a scheduling building block, uh, an integration building block that, that provides uh, the flow of data between systems. And so we really started to recognize that if we can architect um, solutions using this building block approach, we don't have to rewrite code from scratch. We don't have to rewrite everything from the beginning every time. We can stitch these building blocks together into cohesive solutions. And so, and then we can develop solutions quickly that address multiple use cases across multiple sectors. Um, we've developed an online tool that it is starting to create these mappings. So if you are looking for a specific kind of building block, a messaging building block, or a payments building block, or an identity building block, we're starting to map information about what products are already available in the marketplace, like Finneract or Mojaloop for payment solutions. And um, so we're trying to provide and curate a set of data for actors in this space around this building blocks architecture. Um, so a few months ago, we were connected with the Open G2P team and we're really intrigued by the work that they're doing. Um, we see a, a, so much potential in this platform because it aligns so well to this building blocks approach, as you'll see. Um, so with a bit of that background and framing, I will turn it over to Kizom to uh, provide some more information about Open G2P Open and where they're going. Thanks so much, uh, Steve, and good evening to everyone from New Delhi. Um, I am a founding volunteer at uh, Open G2P, and I'm going to be talking today about a particular use case on digitizing the large-scale uh, payment programs uh, with the open source building blocks. 
Um, if we move to the next slide, um, well, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and while there are estimates that, you know, uh, global deaths due to COVID-19 is over a million, um, and, and, you know, sadly that number will grow, it is uh, dropped by this enormous uh, analysis by another UN body that says, you know, 130 million more people will be pushed to the brink of starvation due to, uh, because of the economic turbulence of COVID-19. And on this slide, you will see that almost every government, whether it's the United States or countries like Sierra Leone, Nigeria, et cetera, the global approach has been um, grants and loans to governments aimed at strengthening the national cash transfer programs in emerging markets um, because, uh, you know, it's basically the, the best way to get money in the hands of people. And in COVID-19, we're seeing billions and billions of dollars being sent to people who need it. If we move to the next slide, um, this is uh, basically, you know, what we realize is that, you know, mobilizing the cash transfers is not going to address the systemic challenges related to identifying and uh, assessing the vulnerabilities of people and the ecosystem in a transparent, inclusive and accessible manner, uh, which actually is possible, right? Because we have these great open source tools and technologies out there. Um, but those who those who you know, need the cash transfer often don't have formal identity. And secondly, uh, you know, we also know from our own experience in Sierra Leone that if uh, you know, oftentimes when the cash transfer is done incorrectly, they can have quite a dystopian effect on the uh, you know, community in terms of civil discontent, but also in terms of just not being able to save a person from you know, getting access to daily food or you know, daily essentials that they need to survive this pandemic. Um, if we move to the next slide, um, we basically, you know, this is this is quite reminiscent. Uh, I mean, it's it reminds us of uh, our experience in Sierra Leone. Uh, during that time, I was uh, leading the UN program to pay the Ebola response workers, and basically, um, you know, uh, when the Ebola virus uh, struck uh, in West Africa, there were. Um, an alarming rate of infection and death, uh, especially among health workers that were putting themselves at risk and therefore to incentivize them, there was, uh, you know, especially for them to play this, these very critical roles of, you know, swabbing, of like collecting dead bodies or, or working in treatment centers, there were incentives in the form of cash transfers. But that program started having negative consequences very early on, especially as the number of health workers grew from, you know, a mere 200 in the beginning uh, to, you know, a few months later to, uh, you know, 40,000. Um, and the, the negative consequences basically were the issues of non-payment or fraudulent deduction of the payment by their supervisors, or even after they have received the payments by their last mile agent networks, um, uh, um, or just you know purely late payments uh, that resulted in nationwide strikes and and basically abandonment abandonment of of these you know critical roles that they were playing because you know while they they took to the streets there was just no help power or no response to the significant risk that they were putting themselves in and this really brought the country's response apparatus to a grinding halt um, and it also start, we also started seeing dangerous spike of infections nationwide but what was a turning point for Sierra Leone was the digitization of the entire cash um, uh, delivery chain uh, and it's a process that starts with you know uh, identifying who the beneficiaries are, the recipients, uh, their registration, the uh, assessment of their eligibility, enrolling them to the benefits, then finally paying them, and then continuing to keep that list up to date because in a crisis, the you know number of people who move around um, uh, or get added to a list is quite dynamic. And, and linked to that is the handling of the appeals and complaints that was all achieved through a very seamless integration of these steps to create a system that responded very rapidly and correctly to, uh, to, to uh, 
the um, the objectives, which was to basically pay all the uh, Ebola response workers, 40,000 of them on time, the right amount based on their risk level um, and, you know, in, uh, in full. So what we did with the leadership of the government of Sierra Leone, uh, uh, as well as the, uh, you know, the team of uh, local self-taught programmers at IDT Labs, a startup that uh, Sultan um, started uh, and is still a part of um, among, you know, many other things that he dabbles in. Um, it, uh, they applied solutions that were built in open source that were freely available um, technology to address the problems within this chain of, uh, of uh, uh, cash transfers and they used like you know open data toolkit for registration um uh, uh, employed odu erp at the central database for uh, managing enrollment uh and and trying to maintain the coherence of that forty thousand health workers generating pay lists and then you using things like open br for facial recognition based deduplication which was really important because they were just too you know beyond people you know um adding names uh, uh, fraudulently, there were also just, you know, so many um, uh, sort of um, names that, you know, had different spellings and, and without a proper identity were appearing as, uh, you know, two different people when they in fact were one, pe one person. Um, and these were all sort of, you know, the different ways in which, um, uh, you know, from end to end, from the beneficiary to finally getting the payments out uh, through the uh, digital payments ecosystem that uh, that was activated during the during the Ebola crisis, um, really kind of leveraging a whole suite of open source uh, um um, uh, open source solutions, as well as building on top wherever there were gaps. And this, you know, this delivery chain um, approach to dig digitization uh, cut the payment uh, time to, you know, get the payments out to uh, to the Ebola response workers from over one month to around like, you know, less than one week. And that put an end to payment related strikes. And in doing so, it also strengthened, you know, the national capacity to capacity to contain the uh, disease, uh, treat the infected, um, but also resulted in a huge cost savings of like more than 100, uh, uh, I mean, $10 million for, uh, for, 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 um, for the country. And, and this was largely because of the removal of duplicates. And, and as I mentioned, it's, you know, oftentimes it's also unintended. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, uh, so, you know, that reflection uh, of what we achieved and what we saw for in Sierra Leone was, you know, was, was st struck a really strong chord for us, uh, for for me uh, definitely, for Sultan, I'm sure, and and for all the partners that are part of uh, this Open GDP initiative, because there were, you know, the same challenges that we're seeing today in terms of exclusion, in terms of, you know, um, uh, enrolling. Uh, uh, people uh, rapidly to receive the cash transfers uh, in terms of, you know, grievance redressal mechanisms that's responsive and that uh, cuts across um, different points of the sort of payment value chain. And what we want to do uh, basically through you know, open GDP uh, is is uh, you know, which is which is of course an initiative uh, where the government of Sierra Leone has a very strong ownership as a as as a contributor to the uh, uh, to the digital public goods, uh, you know, to the wider community, along with of course MIFOR style, is uh, is is trying to build a coalition to deploy the. Um, the solutions that are that are available in open source to to the problems of cash transfers, and and you know as volunteers, our hope is really open sourcing these. Um, it provides other governments and other humanitarian organizations that are sending the billions and billions of dollars uh, with a bootstrap of of, uh, of their social protection digitization journey, and and really kind of you know creates that uh, that framework uh, that reference point to to sort of you know um, uh, learn from that experience but also be able to leverage quickly the technology uh, and the solutions that are out there for the problems uh, uh, that, that we see recurring in today's pandemic um, if you go to the next slide um, so what is open GDP? it's basically a set of uh, building blocks that you see in front of you that reuses and augments existing systems in countries 
um, to, you know, uh, our, and our objectives really being to re reduce exclusion, um, to, to, to address grievances in real time and, and really kind of, uh, uh, remembering that exclusion oftentimes is for you know vulnerable segments of the population like you know elderly or for women who are you know not vulnerable but often excluded um and and this is you know um this is really uh, kind of uh it, the the building blocks approach is really to um to so that you know governments or programs can adopt only solutions that address gaps within their within their uh program um, and uh, you know also maximizes choice uh, and interoperability with their existing legacy systems. Um, so with this, I'm going to hand it over to Sultan, um, and we'll go to the next slide. Uh, so, thank you. Um, as 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 outlined there, um, our in, in intention is to is 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 to is, is to provide a bootstrap for. Not just the um, government, but um, and geos um within the, the social pool, pool protection, uh, uh, within social pool protection, and uh, and uh, and 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 uh, so what we have the, to the done um as she she outlined. Was um, was was basically I, I adopt um, a, a building block um, approach in in, in in which we divided um, you know the the the, the, the entire the living chain into um, bounded contexts right and uh, build so. So, so solutions or, or building blocks that um, um I, I, I address just one and, and, and only one the, the pain point with the, the, that chain and 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 uh, and through that exercise and and based off um, the lessons learned from the, the the Ebola implementation um you know we we came up about with um, three main so so region sets. So um, cash transfer programs need to um, digitize how they um, they they identify and uh, and 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 register um, the people in, in, into the 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 the, 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 the programs. So within this this space, we realized that there were a set of, of, of tools or already in, in play. So, for example, most um, programs out there at this time use all the DK to collect um, um, this records, but um, a, a huge gap um, ex exists in, in in how these records are deep deeply catered and 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 then how these records are very far and, and so um you know um and 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 this gap is 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 is, is um existing even more so in in the, the developing world where um the access to foundation identity is some missing so um you know so what we did there was was build um you know a set of specialized tools meant to um, um to 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 address these different uh, pain points um and and, uh, and 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 we built them on so missions out there so um an, an example would be the deep duplication service service, which is meant to um, help organizations keep duplicates out of, out of their, their payment lists. Um, in, 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 in most deployments, um, you know, a lack of, of, of identity means that um, 
it gives you, you know, and it's it's challenging to 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 do this. But um, what would be where it able to do is to um, <laughs> lean on 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 on, on, concepts, on concepts like and and the bio mimetic verification to help on um, organizations um, or, or, or governments duplicate and uh, and then verify their list. So um, and, and an example of, of how um, we we were and and what the, the concept of reusing. Um, projects that are out there would be um, that the duplication service is built on, on top of elastic search. Um, and um, the next major solution set is this how these, these payments are made, right? So um, as it, as it starts from you've been being able to identify and been been able to come up with a with a clean sanitized list but once you once these individuals are in the the, 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 the system they then big big becomes the, the you know the, it, it's a it's a pain point of how to they get get paid how are these payment lists put to together um, verified and, uh, and 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 how are our payment instructions um, trans trans um, and uh, and, uh, um, and 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 an important building block within this um, solution set is the the, the disbursement in, in, in engine which um, is built on which it, um, we just built on top of the of the of the of the, of the Memphis payment um, of the of the of the Memphis payment, um, yeah, and uh, and uh, what it does is it, it, it provides um, that that abstraction um, between the open cheek to p platform. And the and 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 the and the and, and the financial system. So um, and uh, I am so the um, the thought um, uh, and, and 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 important and in in most in, in most of the deployments or, 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 or um, a solution set. You know, that um, has been overlooked is um, um, how complaints are being um, 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 uh, managed, and and what we we have been able to to do for this is um, due to that um, uh, complaints um, in management. Systems um, and the the process for um, the, the the for um, open G to be um, Jason, do you want to do continue, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, if we can move to the next slide. To the, to the next one. This one or one more? One more. So basically, I mean, this is just showing you the framework and Sultan's already put, uh, you know, um, shared uh, in the chat the uh, sort of the, the link to the GitHub as well as the, uh, you know, where we explain in detail these uh, building blocks. James, you know, you are an architect of this this that, that we see in front of us. Do you want to talk about this? Sure. Um, and I do want to make sure we leave it just a, you know, at least a few minutes for 
um, questions. And I, I think we can start the next session maybe a little bit later, possibly, because um, I don't think there's anything after that one. Um, so, you know, there are different swim lanes here. Um, and it's important when you think about a G2P process that you don't over uh, focus or over index on just the payments disbursement. The the part that's, uh, that Sultan's just been talking about is the the registration, uh, deduplication, verification, um, eligibility engine, and all of these things. And then on the other side are the, um, the sort of management of, you know, who gets it. Um, and I would I would give an example. So at the beginning of the pandemic, the government of of Pakistan went through a very rapid deployment uh, using their existing tools. And what and and uh, and we got to hear from somebody involved in that uh, through this process. And what they were able to do is they were able to use uh, use their biometric identification system plus some data analytics to really identify people who needed to be enrolled and to generate a good list. And then they sent it through the disbursement engine. Um, but a piece that's missing in many places, and I, I think I would include um, you know Pakistan and, and other places, is is the beneficiary complaint mechanisms like. Well, what if I didn't get the payment, or or it's the wrong amount, uh, and and so n we have to think through the entire process. And so uh, we've got enrollment, we've got the list management, we've got the disbursement process, um, and and you know, in addition to sort of regular payments, um, some governments want to have this issued as a voucher so that it's only redeemable for certain things, for foodstuffs or or for certain supplies. And so you also need to address some of those uh, those requirements as well. Have I addressed that, do you think? Totally, James, thank you. Um, we can go on, uh, Steve. Thanks so much for running the slides. Um, so, I mean, this is, this is, this point, you know, is just really to emphasize that, um, you know, it augments existing systems. So it's not coming in and saying here, just, you know, throw away whatever you've been working on for the last, you know, 40, 50 years or last 10 years. The beauty is that it can, it's easily aligned also to con the country uh, laws, the local infrastructure and ecosystem, um, you know, uh, 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 around identity, around sort of, um, consumer protect consumer and data protection uh rules and regulations uh and you know the stack basically takes that into you know takes that and really owns it in terms of uh you know providing providing solutions or options uh to users um if we move on um to the next slide. Uh, I mean, these are our guiding ideals. It's not rocket science, but we're really motivated by an intention, a, a deliberate intention uh, to, to really serve the end users, which are often vulnerable people, often marginalized people, and, and really you know, confer uh, privacy and security as inalienable rights uh, for them. And that's really taken into consideration uh, in the whole sort of uh, architect design and, and the way in which the building blocks are laid out. Um, and you can read certainly in greater detail about them on the website as well, where we actually have a working draft that we've put out for the community's feedback. Um, uh, Next slide. I mean, you know, this is basically a shout out to all the partners and, and one, you know, to recognize the tremendous leadership of the government of Sierra Leone. It's a small country, but it's, you know, uh, it's, 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 a, it's been a very strong contributor and, and you know, the, the uh, wanting to give back uh, what they've learned to the world. And then, and then, of course, you know, me for the dial, uh, James, Ed, Steve, the folks really kind of uh, working through thinking about um, the tech stack, but also in terms of how do you make it available, accessible for everyone. And then I think we have just the last slide, which is basically a shout out to Sultan, our speaker on this panel, who is the key architect, along with uh, uh, David, uh, who is also uh, the education minister and the chief innovation officer in the government of Sierra Leone. Um, so thanks so much, uh, Sultan, for championing this really important work and, and for this, these valuable contributions. 
over over to to Q and A, I guess, James. Yeah. So if there are any questions here, um, let's take them. We are sort of pressed for time, but would like to sort of um, you know entertain if there's one or two. Um, if not, the next session is on real time payments. Um, and then the following one will be the Finerac CN improvement. We did start a little late here. So um, I do want to really thank Steve from Dial for coming uh, and and describing the global, the digital global goods um, concept. I want to really thank uh, uh, Kazem and, and Saltum for staying up late um, in <laughs> New Delhi and presenting this idea, which has enormous importance and saliency right now. The World Bank is working on you know this. The governments around the world are working on this, and the open source community, I think, has something to say about how we do um, G 2 P payments, uh, transfer payments using low cost commodity software, you know, providing the best value and 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 building out an ecosystem around this. So I hope people will join. Take a look at the documents. Take a look at the GitHub. Sultan is an amazing um, inspiration to us. So. Thank you, thank you all, and uh, we'll move on to. The, oh, is there an overarching G2P API being defined? Yes, <clears throat> um, that is a, a good question, and uh, I think it goes to how the components are being related to each other. So I don't think there's a single API. There are APIs that talk to different components, and then I think if you look at the overall domain of the APIs. Um, I think we should probably have a discussion about that. I mean, Sultan, um, maybe we, we make that uh, something that we put on the list um, uh, as something to to try to describe. But it's it's that would be great, Sankar. We would love to have your participation. So so reach out um, and uh, and we'll follow up. All right. I think with that, guys, we should we should move over to the next session. And I just want to say thank you um, uh, again for the team.